I knew that you had some passionate fans, but I it wasn't until we were hanging out after the show that I realized just how passionate they really are. There was a it, I mean, there was a lot of fun fan interaction, but there was this one fan that saw you either we were getting into the it was I think it was when we were getting into the elevator after we had dinner. He was like, Doug, he stuck both his hands in the elevator and then was like spreading them and then like was trying to stick his head he's a gynecologist yeah yeah he was basically a future gynecologist yeah he was he was forcing the elevator doors open all right he's a rapist and i think uh my boyfriend frank was yelling out like let it go man let it go like he didn't know if he was gonna have to like physically bounce somebody Uh, out of there when we were getting off the elevator, this is another email that I got, or it was a tweet, I think. Uh, he was wearing a either a Packers or a Vikings shirt, jersey. Uh, as we're getting off the elevator, he was getting on. And he's like, hey, great show. And I go, go the opposite team because they're rivals. And he, tw- I saw the tweet days later where he said, if you're still in the casino, I'll kick your fucking ass. Like you would still be there like days later. Well, no, no. I saw the tweet days later. I try okay. to stay off of Twitter comments. I, I just do output only That's as good. much as I can. That's the way to go. There were a lot of really interesting fan interactions. And then uh, you got an email after the show. You know, we heard vaguely, you know, it was such a big theater or whatever. You can't really see what's going on in the back all the time. But then I, you- I, do, I do remember the incident. Well, not what he told, not the aftermath, but I do remember just in frustration, looking up to where I can't see, hearing people talking, saying, hey, you know, everyone around you fucking hates your guts. So please just shut the fuck up. Yeah, and that got an applause. We get the email. So then this guy sends you an email like detailing this fight and I'm going to read it. Uh, I'm going to, you know, I don't think there's anything personal in here, but if I come across something that is, I'm, I will omit it. Um, well, his name is Orion. So uh, okay, <laughs> okay. He, he's in the uh, New England area. All right. All right. <laughs> and yes, yeah, how many people do you know named Orion? It's probably him. Okay, so here we go. I presume there are not a lot of fights at your shows, and I thought I would share the details of the altercation that transpired. Wait, hey, hey, hang on. Did you did he say not a lot of fights? He, yeah, he said, I presume there are not a lot of fights at your shows. Oh, yeah, he presumed wrong right in the first sentence. <laughs> I thought I would share the details of the altercation that transpired after the show in Mash and Tucket on September 4th. You may be able to get some material. Oh, God. I almost wanted to stop reading after this sentence. You may be able to get some material from it. Well, okay. he's right. We're talking about him. That's- <laughs> oh, shit. He's right. One time the fucking guy's right. Uh, okay, as there is an important but overlooked message on relationship in the details, uh, or it may be something podcast worthy. Well, here we go again. Uh, oh, you fuck. can use after you're finished touring. Secondly, I write about, and then he, uh, I write about political, economic, and social functions rooted in liberty as the basis for uh, morality. And this could be an opportunity to promote my material. Okay, to prepare for the show. This is almost like like a short story to prepare it is. for the show. It goes on and on, so please pause to fucking. Okay, I had yeah, about a third. Not in a good way, Orion. <laughs> I had a bottle. I had about a third of a bottle of Grey Goose that I mixed with orange juice on the ride down. <laughs> Hopefully, he wasn't driving. While I agree that the taste of vodka between brands is not significantly different. For those of us who do not have a thirty-year Stanhope streak of drinking, there is a difference in how you feel the next day between drinking. 40. between drinking goose and plastic bottle vodka i also i didn't know that i i thought there was no difference Uh, i also stopped and purchased a small bottle of johnny walker black and took a few shots as i drove to the casino okay oh my god so he is drinking and driving already followed that up with two jack and cokes i purchased at the casino and i was prepared to watch the show After I was seated, there was a party of three seated to the right of me, two women and one man. They were friendly, and we began joking and engaging in conversation. I got up before the show started to get another drink. I mean, how many drinks are we at this point? I love it. Uh, And the chick, who was two seats from me, asked if I wanted to go with them to dinner afterwards. I accepted. She looked pretty good, and I was confident that I would be in that by the end of the night. (laughs) 
I would be in that. You know, that, that let's stop right there. Nothing <laughs> to me more than confidence. People with confidence are grotesque to me. I agree. I don't know how they get it. I don't know how they hang on to it. David Tell is the best comic of my generation, and he's the least confident person ever. Yeah, People he has no ego. Look mm -hmm. up to. He's, no I confidence. Love driving is is that's that's a hero to me. I agree. I agree. Uh, to the left of me was a couple. You know the details of their behavior. Constantly yelling shit out, excessively wooing, and generally fucking up the show for everybody in attendance. Another couple seated in front of them asked to keep it down, pointing out that there was a show on stage and that they were not the show. The chick flipped out, talking shit. The woman from the couple who confronted them told the staff, and the staff relocated them. Uh, I knew if I confronted them, I was probably going to get into it with them and kicked out of the show. You made a very astute presumption in saying, there is someone in this room who silently hates you. <laughs> the three people seated behind, beside me all turned to me and we laughed pretty hard at that. Prior to the show, I worked 17 out of the last 18 days and the last 12 days straight. I'm saving money. Wait, wait, wait. Hang on. Hang on. Oh, Ryan, what were you doing? Were you writing about Liberty for 17 out of 18 days? Yeah. <laughs> have a day job. Yeah. I just, yeah. I just, I just get a little bit of a tell in that. Or do you have a day job? What's <laughs> up, Ryan? I'm saving money to transition to promoting my material to make money through the realization of my ideas that promote human interest. This is very vague. Um, I, I work on new hotel constructions and I travel for work. Uh, I was working in PA and I drove over 200 miles to see the show. That's a big deal. Yeah, uh, well, that's, uh, that's pacing yourself drinking. As much <laughs> as he drank, it's really not that much if you're driving all the way from PA. That's like saying, yeah, I drank a, 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 an entire handle of plastic jug vodka. It was on a Greyhound bus from <laughs> Pensacola to Seattle. All right, well, that's pace, pacing yourself. Go ahead, Orion. Good point. Well, I wasn't going to fuck my night off arguing during the show. Once I once the show concluded, I was compelled to tell them they were pieces of shit. I don't remember my exact words for most of it, but I told her I hope she develops enough self-worth to not have to fuck up everyone's night to get attention, followed by hoping they didn't make it home, that they would hit a tree or something along those lines. She hey, becomes you know, there's nothing wrong with hoping bad things. Uh, that's one of those Twitter rules where you can't like wish death upon someone. Well, wishes are as good as prayers. They don't work. So <laughs> I don't see the harm. Okay, good point. She becomes aggressive and loud. Her man steps in front of her and the woman seated to the right of me grabs my shirt to lead me away. Instead of allowing me to speak my piece and move on with the night, the drunk cunt starts calling shit, starts talking shit and implying threats. This bitch had the nerve to say, do you know who the fuck I am? No, bitch. Nobody knows who the fuck you are. And that's why you're doing the shit you're doing. I let her know that neither her nor him want this problem. We're walking out and she keeps talking, then calls the woman who was pulling me away a dyke. He spelled dyke wrong. Uh, she may have yeah. been a lesbian. Her friend probably was bi. <laughs> so I spit on her. This is where it really escalates. Uh, then she yeah. moved forward towards me aggressively. So I muffed her. If you're not familiar with the term, it means pushed in her face. Her <laughs> He muffed her. her yeah. Man uh, wait, did you make up this term? Muffing. Yeah, it's I haven't in my whole life heard muffing. Yeah, I think he's probably trying to coin a term. Yeah, stop trying to make muff happen. Uh, her man grabs me from the side and punches me. I grab him, punch him twice, and I didn't know it at first, but he was knocked out on his feet. I put him on the ground as he hit me. I put him on the ground and he hit his head as I put him there. His arms went out to his side and his eyes were wide open. I thought he was dead because although I've knocked other people out before, usually their eyes close or they're half conscious but incapacitated. This dude's eyes were wide open and not moving. <laughs> None of the staff tried to apprehend me, so I calmly walked away. I don't know if uh, there are. Uh, Lucy, if you if you remember, the staff was uh, a median age of about seventy four years old. <laughs> yeah, they were a little old. more docents than staff. <laughs> true, true. They're all just trying to like stay upright. 
No one wants to get in the middle of a fight. Okay. He said, I don't know if there are two parking structures, but I parked at the structure at the uh, other side of the casino. It's probably about two city blocks away. The staff told me it was a six minute walk when I asked for directions on the way in. So, there's so much detail here. Well, uh, when you, I you did actually park in the wrong building and I didn't know where the fuck I was when you showed up going, where are we staying? I, go, I don't really know. It was a little confusing. Okay. To his credit. When I came out of the slot area, I went the wrong way. I asked for directions to the parking structure and I was told it was back the other way. I had to walk past the slot area that is about 60 feet from the entrance from where this dude is laying. And I saw the ambulance pull up. I stopped in the bathroom and took off my button up and left it in the stall. I figure if casino security are looking for me, they're looking for a guy in a blue button up, not a guy in a white t-shirt. You could tell he's done this before. I also lost my hat, <laughs> lost my hat and chain in the altercation. I took my rings off and put them in my pocket. Close to the other casino where the parking right. structure. We gotta stop there. <laughs> he, yeah. He's changing his whole look. But the fact that this dude uh, wears rings, plural, that's uh yeah, that, that's a fucking creepy dude. Yeah, I wonder if one of them was a pinky ring. That kind of tells you all you need to know. I took off my rings. Wait, he lost his uh, necklace in the altercation. And his hat. I thought he just knocked the dude out. Where did the necklace get torn off? Right. Unless it fell off or if it was pulled. Oh. I don't know. He, he, he knocked him out. With, knocked him out on his feet with the first punch and didn't even know it. Yeah. So how would his necklace have fallen off? Yeah. He, he dropped that at the pawn shop. Mm. Interesting. This is interesting. So he's taking his rings off. He's putting them in his pocket close to the other casino where the parking structure is. I took the elevator down a level and left out of a side door. From there, I was able to get to the parking structure, get in my car and leave. As I drove, I had to determine whether I did anything morally or legally wrong, since there was a possibility to me that this guy was dead. Liberty as the basis for morality means that people can do as they please so long as what they do does not impose on the liberty of anyone else. While like they're in a chick's face, <laughs> yeah, he did not need to spit in that girl's face. That's extra. she did say something vaguely threatening, like you don't know who I am. Yeah, just oh, walk away. Oh, that's a reasonable cause. Yeah, he was being extra. Uh, while there are various explanations and layers to cover every possible human action, including deception, circumstantial imposition, and other things, the general rule is not to impose on others. Words cannot be considered imposition unless there is a threat or deception that has consequences for the liberty of that person or others directly or indirectly. Wow, he's getting very wordy. He's uh, getting very jailhouse lawyer. Mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> he's talked his way out of things before I can tell. I was morally wrong and legally wrong for spitting on her, despite her being deserving of being spit on. <laughs> oh, man. But this is of no consequence to my actions that precipitated her husband or boyfriend's injuries. That that's that's called a uh, a, a moral compass with no magnetic pole. Yeah, it's just. He deserved it. I mean, in theory, I mean, who who's with me, people? Yeah, she deserved to get spit on because she mouthed off. Eh. Yeah, he could have just walked away. I was not morally wrong or legally wrong for pushing her face, aka wait, muffing. Wait, wait. He's not morally wrong for that. Yeah, he thinks he thinks it was okay to muff her. Uh, imposition is justified to prevent or remove imposition. She was approaching me in all likelihood to strike me, and I used no more force than necessary to prevent her from doing that. Considering the circumstances, I think this would be legally justifiable as well, since I was trying to get away from the situation, and it's reasonable to believe that she was moving towards me to strike me. It's almost like yeah, it's like why does he need yeah. that? How far are you taking this George Zimmerman argument? <laughs> as for her man, I understood that as a matter of pride, if someone spits on you and pushes your girl's face, you want to take up for her. But I was walking away when he grabbed and hit me morally uh, with his hand on me and having struck me. I'm justified in removing that imposition. Legally, he doesn't have a defense claim since I was walking away. So he can't say he hit me to protect his girlfriend since I was not harming and did not show any intent to harm her. Legally, as I stated previously, I'm trying to get away from the altercation and I didn't do more than was required to defend myself. 
In fact, when I realized that he was unconscious with his eyes open, I put him down slowly and didn't do anything else to him after his eyes wide unconscious with his arms out to his side. Woof. This does not sound good for this guy. Uh, since the tickets were assigned to seats and he sustained serious injury or died, I believe I would have heard something about it and I have been looking. The lesson is that men should be able to control their women in public. <laughs> and by that, I mean curb their behavior when their behavior is disruptive to others, you know, like a dog or a kid or something. Uh, it is the responsibility of a man to defend the woman. So every time a woman is creating a problem with other people, she's making a wager that her man can whoop whoever it is that she's creating a problem with. In this situation, in this guy's defense, when they were confronted by the couple in front of them, he tried to get her to stop. After I said what I said to them, he wanted to leave it at that and let it go. As for your set, the most memorable moments were you correcting the audience on their second applause. <laughs> Give the energy you have. Don't fake the energy you're expected to have. Uh, and the bit about the catheters. Liked the Jimmy's trying to dry spike it. Lol. Uh, I've been I've been creating material for the last few years. I have thousands of pages that I'm compiling, editing. Okay, so he's writing about like the side project he wants to do. Yeah, and then he just goes on and on about his like. It's the project. fucking most endless email. The long. This is a, the longest and email. Usually I skim them, and then I get to the point where I saw, oh, and he might have died. I go, maybe I'll read this one. Yeah, he and if this guy did email. die, he's kind of outing himself. Email. Like, it's not like you can duck into the bathroom and avoid the one security camera at a gas station. They, they have that altercation, you following you everywhere you go, going in, coming out with a fucking T-shirt on instead of a button up. Yeah, they have every bit of that. So they probably thought, OK, it probably seems like the guy didn't got the guy didn't die. And they're probably like, yeah, this guy got sweaty, took his shirt off because they would have gotten him, I think, if if he died yeah, yeah it was it was like he was trying to be obviously the guy did die we would have heard about it i we, we'd both be served with fucking grand jury fucking witness injunction oh, no. <laughs> like, but so yeah, you said you I, 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 I and it. for comedy but yeah I, I i hate to defend the hecklers I hate to defend the people that are fucking yelling out, but you know what? They have security at casinos. You don't need to fucking do that. You don't need to approach her, uh, berate her behavior during the performance. It's, they should have been chucked out. It's, it's a security issue. Yeah. He don't seems, the law in your own hands. Yeah, he seems like really justified. Uh, he thinks he, he was, none of this was in the wrong I was amazed at how quickly he thought to just take his shirt off, take his rings off, change his appearance. It's like he's done this a bunch before. Who wears multiple? What man wears multiple rings? Like if you have a wedding ring, justifiable. If you have a Super Bowl ring, yeah, you, you probably weren't a starter if you're wearing it in public. <laughs> 